you ever found yourself feeling overwhelmed by someone else's emotions? Perhaps you've noticed a friend who seems to absorb every feeling in the room like a sponge or maybe a family member who becomes easily upset by the slightest criticism. You might be dealing with a highly sensitive person or a HSP. Understanding and supporting them can feel like walking a tightrope, but it doesn't have to be daunting. In this video, we'll explore what it means to be a highly sensitive person, how to recognize these individuals, and practical strategies for building healthy and supportive relationships with them. So if you're interested, stick around. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nidhi Kapoor, a certified life coach and a hypnotherapist. And in this video, we're gonna talk about highly sensitive people. So first, let's define what it means to be a highly sensitive person. Dr. Elaine Aaron, a psychologist who pioneered research on HSPs, estimate that about 15 to 20% of the population falls into this category. These individuals have a nervous system that is finely tuned to process sensory information more deeply. It's basically like having a super sensitive radar that picks up on emotional cues, sounds and smells that others might overlook. Imagine walking into a party. While most people are chatting and laughing, you see a highly sensitive person may feel overwhelmed by the loud music, the chatter and the bright lights. Their brain is processing everything at a much, much deeper level, making them more attuned to details and subtleties in their environment. But what does this really mean? It's not just about getting upset easily. It's about how they experience the world. Imagine a highly sensitive person like a finely tuned musical instrument. While a regular guitar sounds good when played normally, a delicate violin will create beautiful music only when handled gently. Highly sensitive people or HSPs notice life's music in deep detail, but this also means they can be more easily bothered by things that feel out of place. How do you recognize a highly sensitive person? Well, that's quite an important question. If you've got highly sensitive people in your life, they may exhibit certain traits. The first one is emotional intensity. Highly sensitive people often feel emotions more intensely than others. A small setback can feel like a mountain and they may cry more easily or become anxious in stressful situations. For example, consider a child who receives a C on a test. While some children might shrug it off, a highly sensitive child might feel like they've let everyone down and dwell on it for absolutely days. This emotional intensity means they may need reassurance and support more, like a sturdy bridge to help them cross the turbulent waters of their feelings. Number two, avoidance of overstimulation. Highly sensitive people might avoid crowded places or loud events simply because it can feel overwhelming, similar to how some people shy away from bright lights or strong smells. Picture a highly sensitive person at a concert. Now, while others could revel in the excitement, they might feel their heart racing and their palms sweating. This overstimulation can lead to a need for solitude afterwards, like a computer that needs to cool down after running too many programs at once. Number three is deep empathy. You see, a highly sensitive person often have, has a profound ability to empathize with others. They might feel your pain as if it was their own, which can be both a gift and a burden. So imagine you're sharing a sad story with a friend and as you speak, they begin to cry. Their reaction is not just sympathy. They genuinely feel your sorrow. You see, this deep empathy can make them incredible friends but it can also lead to emotional exhaustion, like a sponge that can soak up so much water before it starts to drip. Number four, thoughtful decision-making. HSPs often take longer to make decisions, simply because they consider all possible outcomes, similar to a chess player strategizing their next move. So for instance, when choosing a restaurant, while others might Quickly pick a place, a highly sensitive person may ponder the ambience, the menu options, and even how the choice will impact the group's mood. You see, this careful consideration can lead to richer, more fulfilling experiences, but it can also create anxiety, making them feel like they're standing at a crossroad with 
far too many signs. So now that we understand who highly sensitive people are, let's discuss practical tips for interacting with them effectively. Number one, practice active listening. Highly sensitive people appreciate being heard and understood. So when they share their feelings, listen attentively without interrupting. This shows you value their emotions, much like how you would treat a delicate piece of art, respectfully and with care. So for example, if a highly sensitive person tells you about a challenging day at work, resist the urge to offer immediate solutions. Instead, validate their feeling by saying, oh, that sounds really tough. I'm here for you. You see, the simple acknowledgement can be like gentle rain, nurturing their emotional garden. You could also ask them open-ended questions like, what was the hardest part of your day? Simply to encourage them to express themselves even further. Number two, create a calm environment. If you know you'll be spending time with a highly sensitive person, try to create a calm atmosphere. Lower the volume on music, choose a quiet location or simply just in the lights. This can help them feel more comfortable and safe, like providing a cozy blanket on a chilly day. For instance, if you're having a discussion about a sensitive topic, opt for a quiet coffee shop with soft lighting rather than a crowded bar with loud music. This not only helps them feel at ease, but it also allows for more meaningful conversation. Number three, respect boundaries. Highly sensitive people often have natural limits when it comes to socializing or handling stress. So encourage them to communicate their needs and boundaries. If they say they need a break, respect that. Think of it like watering a plant. If it needs a little time away from the sun, that's fine, let it recharge. So for example, if a highly sensitive person in your life declines an invitation to a party, don't take that personally. It's simply their way of maintaining that balance. So you might say, I completely understand. Let's catch up another time when you feel more up to it. Number four, encourage self-care. Remind highly sensitive people of the importance of self-care. Encourage them to take breaks, meditate, or just simply spend time in nature. Just like we charge our phones when we are on low battery, highly sensitive people need time to recharge their emotional batteries. You might suggest that they take a peaceful walk in the park or practice deep breathing exercises. For example, if you notice your friend is feeling overwhelmed, you could say something like, how about we take a short walk outside? Fresh air can do wonders. You see, these practices can be like a refreshing drink of water on a hot day, revitalizing their spirits. Number five, be patient with emotional responses. If a highly sensitive person reacts strongly to a situation, try to respond with empathy rather than frustration. Understand that their emotional responses are valid and not a reflection of weakness. It's like handling a balloon. One wrong move can make it pop. A gentle touch is often what's needed. If a highly sensitive person becomes upset during a discussion, take a step back and remind yourself that it's not about you. It's about their heightened emotional experience. For example, if your friend becomes tearful when discussing a personal issue, you might say, it's okay to feel this way. I'm here for you and we can talk about it when you're ready. Number six, use clear and kind communication. You see, when you're discussing sensitive topics with highly sensitive people, be clear but compassionate. Use I statements to express your feelings without actually sounding like you're accusing them. For example, instead of saying, you always overreact, try saying, I feel concerned when I see you upset because I care about you. This approach can encourage open dialogue and reduce defensiveness, allowing for a more productive conversation. If a situation arises where you need to address a sensitive matter, frame it more positively. Like, I really appreciate your perspective and I'd love to hear more about how you feel about this, whatever that thing is. Number seven, offer gentle encouragement. Sometimes highly sensitive people may hesitate to step out of their comfort zones. Offer gentle encouragement when they face new challenges. If a friend with HSP tendencies is nervous about giving a presentation, remind them of their strengths. Like, you've prepared so well for this and your insights are valuable. So just take a deep breath and remember, you're not alone up there. 
Something simple like this can help bolster their confidence without overwhelming them, much like a gentle push on a swing. Number eight, be mindful of humor. Humor can be tricky with highly sensitive people. While joking around is often well received, some jokes, especially those that involve criticism or sarcasm, might sting. When joking, ensure it's light-hearted and not at their expense. If you're unsure, err on the side of caution. For instance, if you're all sharing laughs over a funny story, gauge their reactions. If they seem uncomfortable, shift the topic gently onto something more universally enjoyable. By understanding and supporting highly sensitive individuals, you not only enhance your relationship with them, but you also create a more compassionate environment. Remember, sensitivity is not a flaw. It's a unique trait that comes with its own set of strengths and challenges. So the next time you're navigating the waters of emotion with a highly sensitive person, keep these tips in mind. You'll find that a little understanding and kindness can go a long way in building a strong and supportive relationship. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more insights on emotional well-being and building healthier relationships. Together, we can create a world that embraces sensitivity as a strength, not as a weakness. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care.